Hey, I'm glad you're with me today. We're at Exodus chapter 5, verses 6 and 9. Pharaoh, uh, Moses and Aaron have gone into Pharaoh and they've had their first audience with him. Didn't exactly end in a really joyful situation for anybody. Let's look and see what happens next. Verse 6. So the same day Pharaoh commanded the taskmasters over the people and their foremen, saying, You are no longer to give the people straw to make brick as previously. Let them go and gather straw for themselves. But the quota of bricks which they were making previously you shall impose on them. You are not to reduce any of it. Because they are lazy, therefore they cry out, Let us go and sacrifice to our God. Let the labor be heavier on the man, and let them work at it, so that they will pay no attention to false words. All right, so this is Pharaoh's reaction the same day that Moses and Aaron go in and say, Hey, let my God, thus says the Lord, let my people go. The same day Pharaoh issues orders, make them work harder. And don't give them any straw anymore. So now the Hebrews have to go out. And it's not that they're going to supposed to make bricks without straw. That's kind of the common uh, myth or the little saying. But no, they just have to, the, the Egyptians are not going to provide it. The Hebrews have to go out and scrabble it up and find it wherever they can find it. The, the, the Egyptians are not going to provide it. So they've really got to scramble for it. And they're not going to be successful. Pharaoh has set really here uh, virtually an impossible task. And the people are stuck with it now, now that Moses has come. Uh, what a loser he seems to be. And now we're all under even more trouble. You see how their thinking is. So Pharaoh shows complete contempt for the God of the Hebrews by issuing, you know, revising his orders. Now you guys do this work without even our Egyptian provision giving you the straw. He's countermanding. God says, let my people go. And Pharaoh says, uh, not only are they not going, now they're going to work even harder. And, you know, maybe the Hebrews anticipated, it kind of seems that they did, that uh, somehow this was going to end, you know, real easy, you know. We're just going to, Pharaoh's going to say, okay, well, all right, have a nice day. Go worship to your God. But no, that's not what happens. Instead, we get this, this crackdown out of the palace of Pharaoh. And Pharaoh's move here is quite astute. I mean, he wants to create a d division between Moses and Aaron and the Hebrew people who are, you know, under his, under his Pharaonic thumb. And so he's dividing and conquering. You've ever heard of that? Well, Pharaoh used it a long time ago, attempting to do that. And you know, this same tactic is going to be used, is being used against God's people today. Pressure will be brought against us today. Anybody who comes along and says, hey, we should check and see what the Bible says. Hey, maybe we should reform this practice. Maybe we've allowed too much. We've trusted government too much, or we've trusted uh, corporations too much, or, or, you know, whatever the thing is. Maybe we need to go back to the Bible and, and dig in tighter and find out more what God has for us. There's more blessings here that we've, we, haven't been, we haven't been benefiting from because we've been uh, letting too much mingle between the world and God's world. And when somebody comes along with any kind of message of reform like that, you better believe it, pressure is going to be brought and these same tactics will be used against you and I and our churches today. So let's see tomorrow morning uh, what happens next.